Hi guys, it's Rob here with another IT386 tutorial. And as promised in the last video, I'll explain to you what soft selection is. So soft selection is when you, so it's not a rigid selection. So with normal selection, when you select a face or something and you start to pull it out, uh, that whole face is being pulled out. But soft selection is a method of selecting geometry in sort of a more organic way. So when you select, it has a different uh, influence depending on how far away from the selection you get. So if you p were to pull up, let's say, a vertice with a regular select, you would get a spike. Sort of, there would be just a, a point pulled out and it would kind of look like a spike, depending on the shape of your mesh. But if you were to soft select that, it would sort of be more like a hill, right? You wouldn't have that rigid point at the top. And the reason for this is because as you move away from the point of influence, as you move away from the vertice that you've selected, the influence that the, the selection has on the mesh becomes less and less. So this is useful for making curved objects or objects that, you know, are rounded. Now, holding down B and clicking and dragging allows you to get a larger or smaller area to be affected by the soft selection. And it's the same thing for sort of painting weights with rigging. Now, we're not going to get to that in this course, but a lot of these tools, if you hold down the B key and you click and drag, you could, uh, it allows you to affect the area of uh, smaller or larger by the soft selection. If you drag to the left, it makes it small. If you drag to the right, it makes it larger. Now you could press space to toggle between the, the four views and single mode. And there are four cameras, perspective, top, front, and side. Now if there's white edging around a view, it means that you have the camera of that view selected. Tumbling is basically changing your perspective or rotating the view. Now to combine two objects, you would select both of the objects and then go to mesh combine. And there's two ways to fix an object's pivot. So one way is you could go modify and then center pivot. Or two is click the insert key and hold V to snap the pivot to any point. Now NURBS are the equivalent of 3D vector lines. So sort of Photoshop, right, you have bitmap graphics. Uh, Illustrator, you have vector graphics. Well, sort of polygonal modeling is sort of like the bitmap. And NURBS is sort of like the vector graphics. Now, with Boolean difference, the first object you select is the one that remains. The second one is the object that gets cut out. Now, here's a bunch of selection hotkeys. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them with you. I think they're pretty self-explanatory. Now, to select an edge loop, you would click an edge, and then shift, double-click an adjacent edge to select that edge loop, or you could go to select edge loop. Now, before smoothing, you can add edge loops to maintain the volume of your object. Now with box modeling, you would start with a primitive, rough out the shape, and then add edge loops and smoothing to add the detail and, and the resolution. Now rendering and render engines. So rendering is the process of developing your final quality image, usually for your portfolio. Uh, render engines, we have the Maya software, or the mental ray, those are the two that we're going to be working with in this course. Now the Maya software is quick, simple, and comes in handy for motion graphics and cartoon style. So non-photorealistic. We're not really going to be using this this much in this course, but we do talk about it a little bit. Now, the mental ray takes longer to render a single image, and there's a lot more calculations done and much more realistic uh, with light and reflections, but it creates a photorealistic end result. So this is sort of when you see one of those 3D renders and you're like, wow, this looks like it was created in real life. Uh, this is like one of the render engines that's actually used, whereas the Maya software, you could kind of tell that it's, it's sort of fake, sort of like when people, uh, some people are so good at photoshopping photos, that you'll be like, wow, you won't even know the difference. Like, you know, you might you might think something's wrong, but you're like, this really looks real. And then some other people, when they do it, you're just like, wow, that was Photoshop, that was airbrushed. Like, you know, you could you could definitely tell the difference. And sort of with these two render engines, you kind of can tell the difference as well, especially also with the quality of your renders as well. So you never want to close the output window, as we discussed in one of the last tutorials. You always just minimize it, or you'll have to reload the Mental Ray plugin again. And there's instructions at the top of the review sheet under technical help, uh, for that, and I also went over how to do that in the last video, in one of the last videos. Now, the common tab is available for every render engine in Maya, renderable camera. You could choose which camera you will render from. The passes tab allows us to separate layers to meet our needs. Features, uh, that's a quick place to turn off, on or off render features. And the quality tab, the higher the quality, the longer the renders will take. And that's about it for this tutorial, guys, but stay tuned and uh, be sure to tune in for the next tutorial. Thanks, and please don't forget to like and subscribe.